36 years ago, our grand challenge was to create images that were indistinguishable from reality. For the next 36 years, our grand challenge could be to create interactive experiences that are indistinguishable from reality and merged seamlessly with reality. So those are 10 things that could keep us, help keep us busy for the next 36 years. You may have noticed that many of the examples I gave were SIGGRAPH papers, which shows that interactive techniques are actually still here. They're still part of the field, and that's great news. Well, because I like dials that go to 11, I want to add one more, and that is just something completely unexpected. This is actually what I'm looking forward to the most, because the most interesting and exciting things can sometimes come as a complete surprise. We need to keep an open mind about what our field encompasses. And we don't need to just be open to new ideas, we need to be biased toward new ideas. This doesn't mean relaxing our high standards, but we should use different types of standards for mature work and groundbreaking work. If a paper opens up an interesting new area and makes us think about things differently, then we should be willing to take it even if it has flaws. We need to welcome things that don't fit neatly into our existing categories. We need to embrace serendipity. Most of the challenges in this list have non-graphics aspects to them. And personally, I find the interdisciplinary nature of our field exciting. But this breadth can make the field feel unfocused. It helps if we're clear about our role, namely visual interaction with technology. I should note that this does not preclude interaction that involves other senses as long as there is a visual component. For example, there's a Cornell paper here this year on simulating fluid sounds and synchronizing those sounds with an animation of a simulated fluid. And as our field has grown, we have seen lots of new conferences and spinoffs that focus on particular aspects of the field, including interaction. And that makes sense. Well, it used to be that, all, that this was all at SIGGRAPH, but the field has grown and there's way too much for one conference. But we still need a place that embraces the entirety of visual interaction and graphics, a place with a broad scope that, where all these disciplines can cross-pollinate. And I believe that, that should be SIGGRAPH. Finally, I want to say something about our community. It is a big part of what I love about this field. People here are smart, they're creative, and they love what they do passionately. But perhaps most remarkably, they are genuinely enthusiastic about the success of others. And that makes you an absolute joy to work with. The field was like this when I started, and it's still that way today. There are pressures now that we didn't feel then, such as the limited number of tenure slots, but on the whole, we are successfully resisting them and we haven't lost our spirit of camaraderie, and I'm very proud of us for that. I also want to say a bit about the strong art and film presence at SIGGRAPH. This is sometimes looked down on as frivolous entertainment that's peripheral to a serious technical conference, but it's actually very important to us. Like interaction is challenging for engineers. We have a natural bias to see things from an automation point of view because we get so focused on the machinery we're building. So it's really helpful for us to work with people who are using technology to do something creative because you can't automate creativity. Artists trying to express their creativity constantly challenge us to find better ways to interact with technology. And this pure form makes it easier to find the good principles, which can then be applied elsewhere and we certainly need it. Our world is full of automation that is unhelpful, dehumanizing, and infuriating. And this will be even more relevant in the future as computers increasingly take over rote tasks and the jobs that remain are the more creative ones. This engineer art, artist collaboration has been a vitally important part of our field for a long time. From Ken Knowlton and Lillian Schwartz at Bell Labs, to Alvy Ray Smith and Ed Imschuller at NYIT, to Jim Blinn and David M. at JPL, 
to Pixar and John Lasseter. And this is a tradition we need to continue. And so I was very happy to see the first Digital Arts Awards given this year. In conclusion, this is an extraordinary time in technology, and this group belongs at the vanguard, not on the sidelines. But the role we play will depend on how we resolve this identity crisis. If we choose the broader view, the field will be more rewarding, it will have more impact on the world, it will be more inspiring, and it will attract the best and the brightest. Finally, let me note that we are not unique in facing this type of crisis. It is common for people to underestimate how much they don't know and to think that the big exciting discoveries have already been made. My favorite example of this is Albert Michelson, a great physicist who got a Nobel Prize for the Michelson-Morley experiment. Here's what he said 115 years ago in 1894. The most important fundamental laws and facts of physical science have all been discovered. And these are now so firmly established that the possibility of their ever being supplanted in consequence of new discoveries is exceedingly remote. Our future discoveries must be looked for in the sixth place of decimals. And when he said this, we didn't know that the atom had a nucleus. We didn't know that there were galaxies. We didn't know what powered the sun. We didn't know how old the universe was, much less little details like relativity and quantum mechanics and particle physics. My goal today has not been to give you the answer, but rather to help encourage us to engage more in these questions. This is not easy. It is difficult to step out of our current perspective and see our broader opportunities, but it is essential that we have these conversations. So look, I don't know how technology will change, but I do know this. However it changes, how we interact with it will be important and challenging and interesting. If we fully embrace our original charter, our next 36 years could be even more exciting than the last 36. Thank you.